What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you are new to the channel, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into something new. We are jumping into Swamp Thing Green Hell. This brand new run coming from Jeff Lemire. With this story being set outside of the continuity of everything currently going on with DC Comics. So this story is not connected to Ram V's Swamp Thing. But if you guys want to check that out, go ahead, check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It's going to get you caught up on everything that is currently going on with the Swamp Thing in DC Comics. But with this story, we are going to the end of everything. With the entire world being taken over by water, there is one small sliver of land, and on this piece of land, we have what remains of humanity trying to survive. That is, until the parliaments of green, the red, and the rot all get together. And so with that being said, oh, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue 1, we are picking up with Donald and his daughter. Currently out on a boat in the middle of the water, they are fishing, trying to get anything to help their community. And we learn very quickly that their fishing expeditions, they don't go necessarily well. Because there is so much trash and junk in the water that every time they reel in their nets, more often than not, they're finding boots, they're finding cans, they're finding the throwaway of humans past. More than anything, we are getting a demonstration of what life is now currently like, with life being a constant struggle just to survive. But with the two of them going in for the day, they get to the dock and they are met by an individual that goes by the name of Old George. Just an old man who lives on the island, a man who remembers the past, remembers what life was like prior to the water taking everything over. And with Donnie's daughter running off and going and playing with the other children. And so with the little one running off, George and Donald, they sit down, they have a conversation, mostly about the lighthouse. The lighthouse and the man who lives inside of it. Not wanting to fill his daughter's head with any kind of nonsense, trying to keep everyone away from that man and the lighthouse. Donald wants him to stop telling stories to all of the kids about that individual. But in the midst of their conversation, they get interrupted by some thugs. And they have come to collect a bounty. They have come to take their tax. Because now living in this world, the more men you have, the more firepower you have, the more power you have, the more control you can take. And because of this, any remnants of humanity, they suffer at the hands of these men. And we quickly learn that Donald, he in fact has a relationship with these men. Because the leader, it is his brother-in-law. Or at least it used to be. Because Donald's wife had ended up killing herself when, when they all decided that they were going to come here and try to survive. Donnie even had the opportunity to join this gang, but he turned it down for a peaceful life. For an opportunity to try to rebuild something. And though Donald tries to protect these people, tries to let these guys know that if you take what we have, we will not be able to eat. But because of this outburst, they start beating the heck out of him. And once they have had their fill, they make their exit. And this is just one small example of the day-to-day -day lives of all of our survivors. Of those remnants of humanity that are left alive, this is the new normal. But all of that is about to change. And it all begins with the parliaments meeting and having a discussion. The green, the red, and the rot. Because as it stands, the world is out of balance. There is not enough for everybody to feed on. There is not enough rot. There is not enough dead. And there is not enough life. The cycle has been broken. And because of this, they plan to rectify it. To cleanse this planet and start anew. But the only one that can truly do something here is the green. Because the rot cannot act alone. The rot serves the red. And the red serves the green. The red not able to turn on its own kind. 
not able to destroy humanity, that means it is all up to the green. And with the green agreeing that it is time to purge this planet, accepting the task at hand and wiping out all of humanity, the green is ready to find its avatar. And that is what picks us up later that evening. All of the people that are remaining on this small little island, they are having a meeting. And this discussion is going along the lines of we need to wipe out those pirates before they come back and take everything we have. That this has gone on for far too long. The people are tired of being victims and they are ready to fight back. And of course Donnie, he is completely opposed to this idea. Believing that if they resort to violence, that makes them no better than those that attack them. And it will just continue to create this circle of violence that will be never ending, which got us all here in the first place. Having limited weapons, they consider going to the man at the lighthouse. But many in the village, they believe that he's more dangerous than the pirates themselves. And so because of this, all of them, they turn away from that idea. They turn away from it, go over to a rug to lift it up and expose an entire arsenal of weapons. And so we are picking up with our pirates on an oil rig out in the middle of the ocean. This is their safe harbor. Having visuals in every single direction, it really is a nice area to be able to have some kind of stronghold. Unlucky for them, our local villagers know these waters and they were able to sneak up on them and it is an all out attack. Without wasting any time, this brutal massacre begins. People dying on both sides. But we see Donnie's brother-in-law. He gets knifed in the back and thrown into the ocean. With him sinking to the bottom, this is where the green is able to grab hold. Grabbing hold of him, he has become the new avatar. He has become what the green will work through to wipe out all of humanity. And with him being taken over, he is not in control. The green has full control. And what started as a battle between two becomes the massacre of everyone that is on this oil rig. And the green is leaving nobody alive. Taking us back to the island, we have Donnie talking to his daughter, letting her know that she is going to have to lay low that some of the others, they went to attack the pirates, and so we can more than likely expect some kind of repercussion for this. That she needs to lay low, stay safe, and wait for his return. And as they make their way out to the shoreline, preparing for whatever might come, nothing had prepared them for what was actually coming. Having the Swamp Thing arise out of the water, carrying body parts all over its vines because its mission is not done. As long as humanity survives, the Swamp Thing will cut through any flesh that exists. And before they even get an opportunity to move, this extermination begins. Our survivors doing everything they can to fight this thing off, to give others the opportunity to run away. And the green is merciless. With everyone dead around Donnie, the green grabs hold of him, is about to take his own knife and drive it into his eye. Lucky for Donnie, some of the villagers, they come up and they start attacking the green. And just for a moment, they are able to immobilize the green. With the swamp thing appearing to be dead on the ground, our villagers turn to walk away, only for the swamp thing to get up and start massacring again. While all of this is transpiring, old George, he goes and grabs the little girl and they head out. They head out to the one location that might actually save their lives. Recognizing that this battle has been lost, that there is no chance of survival, that is what brings them to the lighthouse. And as they make their way into the lighthouse, this is where we see the one, the only, John Constantine. He is the one that the villagers have been afraid of. He is the one that everyone stays clear of. But right now, they need John Constantine more than ever. John Constantine had known that this was all inevitable. That there was going to be an end of the world scenario that was going to pop up eventually. John had had his money on something to do with apocalypse. What he did not count on was the parliament going to this extent. And so they make their way outside. Going outside, they find a ring of rocks. 
and this is where he begins to do a spell, still having a couple of tricks up his sleeves. He does this spell, he throws some green into the middle of it, and this is where it begins to burn a bright green. And in the middle of all of this, we see an object forming. We see a person forming. And from that person, we see the Swamp Thing. And this is Alec Holland. This is the avatar of the Swamp Thing from the past. John Constantine resurrecting him from his resting place. And Alec is not happy. He is not happy because he was finally home. He was finally where he belongs and happy. And being brought back to this hellish world, he grabs John Constantine by the throat and he asks the question, Why have you brought me back? Why am I here? Constantine letting him know that he never meant to interrupt his little vacation. But right now, what is left of humanity needs saving from the green. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Now, for those of you that have been following my channel for quite some time, you know I love that dystopian story, the post-apocalyptic, the world's ending, and humanity is fighting for survival. Those are some of my favorite stories, and that's exactly what we are getting out of this. Except it's not some, some horrible or evil monster that is coming after them. It is the green trying to restart the cycle on Earth trying to give rebirth to this planet. But to have that rebirth, all of humanity needs to be wiped out. They need to restart this planet from the very basics. Obviously, humanity, what is left of it, it attempts to fight back. And that comes in the form of our previous avatar, Alec Holen. The man who has worn the title of the Swamp Thing for quite some time until our Ram V line had hit. But with John Constantine, bringing the Swamp Thing out of retirement. He is not happy about it, but he may be the only force that can fight back against other Swamp Things. So I believe this really does have a lot of potential. There's a lot of different directions that they can go with this story, and it's nice to get something that is Swamp Thing that's currently off of what is going on with Ram V. Now, I've said it a million times, Ram V is an amazing, amazing writer. Arguably, Swamp Thing is one of the best things to be coming out of DC Comics right now, but anytime we get to see Alec back as a Swamp Thing, I am 100% on board and ready to see what they have to offer. Now, we are in this new post-apocalyptic era, and we see that there's not many heroes left alive. But if John Constantine is still around, it begs the question, is Aquaman still alive? Does Atlantis still exist? What heroes may still be out there? This is a prime opportunity to pin any hero, any villain you want against the Swamp Thing and see how they can hold themselves. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.